little awkward. Right side. Right side. That's fine. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This way? Yeah. <laughs> the time to rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. You go. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we are. Patty <laughs> McCormick, ladies and gentlemen. Before, before we get uh, hello, yes, right. Before we get into details, yeah. tell the audience that the end of the film yeah. is not the end of the play. Um, no, no, no. I think probably um, I can't see anybody, so if I'm not staring at faces, it's just because I'm blinded. But I like probably how it looks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we, have, we did a play, you know, and we, we could hardly see each other because of the blinding lights, but we all look great. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, the end of the play uh, had an ending where. Rhoda was uh, saved, and but um, the mom, Nancy Kelly, shot herself in the head, I guess, you know, and so the movie ending was a little sketchy because that wouldn't have been the result, you know, of her um, shooting herself, <laughs> unless she missed, you know, basically. Um, not to make fun, but, um, but the, the theater uh, ending was so much scarier mm -hmm. because uh, no one knew. Mm -hmm. And at the very the very last scene actually was written like the scene in the hospital where Monica announces, but you still have Rhoda. And then out comes Rhoda and, uh, and does, what will you have, uh, what will you give me for a basket of kisses for your daddy? Mm -hmm. And he answers and then that's the end. <laughs> so it was uh, not a happy time for the audience. <laughs> it was frustrating, to say the least, in that era, especially, you know, 1954 or 50. Yeah, but they couldn't do that in the, in the film because there was a production code mm. and the criminal had to be punished and you're the criminal. That's so right. you can't live. No, well, the film couldn't have gotten released. I remember mm. the Hayes Code. Mm. I've yes. heard that so heard much. That. Yeah. You couldn't have gotten away with it, but on stage you did. But on stage you could. So, uh, <laughs> so that uh, explains why the ending was changed. And, and also, the, the, and the reason we had a curtain call in the film was because Mervyn Leroy really liked it, <laughs> but it was done originally to take the um, edge off the ending <laughs> so that the audience could leave happily knowing that Nancy was spanking me, you know. <laughs> so the curtain call in the film is exactly as it was. As it was, yes. Exactly. And very, very uh, few replacements uh, of the actors. There were, a lot of us were brought right from New York, which mm. was uh, not common. But, well, for, for good reason. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning. Do you remember your audition? I, vaguely, I remember my audition. Um, I remember I, I was about eight and a half. I wasn't, hadn't turned nine yet, and um, I auditioned with Nancy Kelly. And I don't remember what we did together, but the director was Reginald um, Denham. Denham. I always want to say Denny. Yeah. Remember the musician Reginald Denham? <laughs> and uh, oh, it's, I can see that now. Um, and I really don't remember the logistics of the audition, but there was a callback, I believe, and uh, and then it, it was announced that somebody else had gotten uh, the job. It was published that some some other kid out there at the time had gotten it, and I, I remember being very sad. So it, it showed me that I. And looking back, it showed me that I really enjoyed working. Did you have anyone help you with the audition, or was it just your own ideas? Gosh, you got me. I wish I had an answer. Um, I don't, I mean, of course, I, I know I was only reading. I think I started reading about seven. I was a little late reading. So before that, um, before that my mother would read the, you know the lines to me 
so that I could memorize them. So you you memorized what you auditioned? Probably. Without, I, without I, reading. I would imagine. Or they just, uh, I, I, I really, I wish I could make up an answer, but I don't want to, you know? <laughs> I just know, I do remember being in a theater, being not on stage, I remember being below the stage, standing in front of the stage, more or less, and, um, and Nancy Kelly being there, and, and the director, as I said. And there was one callback, as you recall? Well, as I recall, there must have been, because it was a very desirable part for a kid, and, um, and I'm sure, um, that whoever was pu was published got the job. <laughs> she but, she probably had a call back too. But did your, <laughs> did your mother have any qualms about her little eight and a half year old playing this sport? I I, I obviously no. <laughs> because you know I was living at home and no. Um, but she, um, you know, it was that era too where, you know, I, I think I told you the story was uh, Blue Denim. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. Um, I remember that I was, uh, they were interested in me for Blue Denim, uh, which is a movie with our friend Marsha Hunt. And, uh, and Brandon DeWolf, yeah. is that right? Yeah, Brandon, who I was friends with. Um, mm. Anyway, uh, and but the, in the story, the lovely, beautiful Carol Lindley played the role, um, and she, uh, the character, had to be pregnant. Was going to be a pregnant, so it meant that they had gotten together, you know. And uh, so that was immediately rejected by my mom. By your mom, but you could be a psychopathic killer. <laughs> yeah. so, I guess I don't know whether she just picked, you know, that for some. But it seemed like so. The message was, you know, you're better off killing, you know, than having sex, <laughs> especially at that age. And um, I'm making jokes. When, once you started uh, rehearsals. <laughs> there must have been a lot in the play that a kid wouldn't have understood. You didn't understand nature versus nurture, environment versus uh, no. being born that way. You, that was, you didn't understand any of that. I, I really, no. No. Uh, you know, genetic things. And, no. No. and nobody uh, explained them to you? Well, no, because the outcome didn't matter. I mean, I know people, you know, you go into the why of everything and all of that, but ultimately what I played was much simpler. Um, it was that I was always right and anything I wanted, I deserved. And most of the adults around me were idiots. Um, and I had not a lot of patience for that. So when you think of those simple directions, uh, and that I and I really did love my daddy. Mm. I really did, and I could see that in the you know, and and my grandpa. So I think I was more fond of men than of women in general. Um, stuff like that, simple directions that you, uh, the you know. It, but the the nature versus nurture would have been pointless for you to understand at that time. Oh, yeah. I don't think they even just, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, no. It wasn't Yes, discussed. yes but, is the answer. Yes, but, but, <laughs> and I, this, I, I, I'm convinced of, and what? seeing the film, Leroy has a thing for Rhoda. He can't stay away from her. I didn't know he that cannot. aspect. You didn't know that aspect either. No, I had no clue. Um, but later on, I learned that. <laughs> can you see it in the film? Oh yeah, now yeah, I you see, can it. see it. Even the shot where I'm down uh, the uh, the stoop, the, yeah. down the stoop, and he does the water thing, yes. and they shot behind my yes. body, it's so my little dress went up. It's sort of sexual. It's it, it seemed to be. Yeah, but you wouldn't know the thing at the time. My mother obviously didn't get it. So. <laughs> 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 you must credit your Reginald Denham oh, totally. with a lot of help getting he made you through it, this part. He made it, uh, it was never a problem, you know, it was never a problem. 
It was all, it was fun, fun to do because he was a wonderful director, obviously, he did a lot of things, didn't he? Yes, he did. Well, Dial M for Murder was, was his mm. big hit. He, he was didn't a British did, director. Yeah. He did he a was lot British. of stage, a and, lot of stage. And I think um, there was something running at the time, pro, a witness for the prosecution, mm. oh, no. and he, I believe he was connected to that. I'm I not sure. So it was Dial M for Murder was his oh, big okay. hit. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, anyway. Were, were the cast members nice to you or patient with you. What I do want you to tell the audience is um, Leroy Jones, Henry Jones was the most different from the characters. Nothing like that character, obviously. He was, but he was very kind to you. He was. He was. He was. Uh, he watched out for me as a child actor. Um, and he made sure that it was known that I wasn't going to school on that May days and things like that. And you know, he looked like the enemy at the time, you know, to, but in, in actuality, he was just a really terrific uh, parental type person and very classy, you know, very sophisticated person. So, Did oh, many roles, you well, know. Yes, yes, yes. So that this, was a stress for him. This is his finest hour. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't that a magnificent character? Yeah, yeah well, I love But what you also yeah. told me, which is surprising and not, was the actor you least bonded with and the most oh, yeah. attached was Eileen Hecker. Well, because she had such, I would say, knowing now, being an adult, she had such an emotional journey. There was, both her scenes were like, you know, a 10, you know, what they were. And for, for whatever reason, also there was no opportunity to communicate with her. But it sort of played out in a funny way, nicely. Um, because I, I had the least communication with her. She may have liked that also. I, I, I don't know. I, I, to protect her part in a way? I don't know. I, I can't begin to analyze. I mean, because she had a wonderful sense of humor. I know that later on. I worked with her a couple of times later on. And um, so it could have just been uh, uh, the logistics of what we were doing, where she was on and, and then I came on and that was all we had together, but she worked with Nancy and she worked with... But I like the idea that she used it for the part, that she didn't want to get fond of you. No, maybe. And maybe didn't want to get close to you because you killed her little boy. Right. So that I think it makes, makes sense. sense. And isn't Eileen Heckhart incredible? Oh. I mean, wow. those, those two scenes are extraordinarily incredible. difficult. Yeah, and um, yeah. yeah. You, you said Absolutely. you told me, Patty, that you once played in the stage oh, production yes. of well, Bad Seat, and you played that role? Yeah. You did? Yeah, but it was, I, I'm sure I just absolutely mimicked her. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I heard her her melody you know, in yes. my head, and it was really hard to not do it that way. So, um, But it was a fundraiser for the Staten Island Shakespearean Theater Company, and my nephew, who is here tonight, Fred Cerullo, um, directed it. And Freddie is not a, a stranger to the business. So, although that's not his career, but he, he's uh, he's done a few things himself, so. But, but you saw how difficult that role is when you played it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh it was just really challenging, really challenging. Yeah. Did you bond with Nancy Kelly? Oh, totally. Um, we were, um, she was the kind of person who on some matinees, oh, well, she bought us matching uh, theater robes. And, uh, and then on matinee days, she would oftentimes order uh, from uh, Sardi's, which was like, hmm. I was so sorry Sardi's wasn't open yet while we were, are they open yet? No, I don't think so, but they, um, must, yeah. Yeah, they have to, uh, but terrible I do, for yeah. <laughs> So um, maybe that's where my love for cream spinach began. <laughs> and uh, did so you know that Nancy Kelly was a child actor as well? I didn't know that. Yeah. I know she was young, Very but young. I didn't know she was a child. Yes, she had her career goes way back to yeah. the twenties. She began very young. What was the film uh, she was in? Oh my goodness. I hate to, I shouldn't start a conversation if I don't see the end in sight. It's a lesson I have to learn. Um, but it was a, it was a, a big film. 
Sorry. <laughs> Look it up. Google it. She was, she was uh, 17. Anyway. Well, she was very young, so she might have had some understanding of you as a child. Maybe performer. that. As and she had a brother, Jack uh, Kelly, yes. who worked quite a bit. Yes. Sir. And uh, I, so I think maybe the mother. She has stage she, has, she did have stage <laughs> Yeah. But yeah I think she gives an extraordinary performance. It's yeah. so mm -hmm. difficult. She takes I such know. chances. And Do you know so she, big. And when she hits her hand yes. on the table like that, I think something happened one time because I think it's a thing for her, you know? Um, and I think she broke her hand at one point. Anyway, that's the, that's the best little the dramatization best. of rising hysteria I've ever seen. Isn't it wonderful? It's, a, it's amazing. It's yeah. very, it seems large and theatrical, but it's very truthful. And, and remember that, that the, the, the arc of it is all there, and that was easier in the theater when you had a, where you kept going, because it, you know, you build it and it keeps going and it grows. But that was film, so uh, for her to be able to hit those different levels. Which she did. Which she did. Yeah. Now you did the show for 330 performances. I right? didn't know that. Okay. And, and yeah. you, you never missed a performance. No, you weren't allowed to back then. Well, it was not acceptable. It wasn't acceptable, but you never missed a performance. Yeah. And Patty was, uh, some of us old timers will remember, Patty was on uh, I Remember Mama. Oh yeah. And so there were some Fridays that the show taped at 8 to 8.30. And in those days, the curtain for theater, believe it or not, was 8.40. 8.40. And you got into a taxi and went across town. And changed in And changed yeah. in the taxi. Were you ever late? Yes. We, I was late. And, and I, I know that my understudy was, you know, just green, you know, standing with the costume on, wishing to God I'd get there because she was a little girl, too, you know. And, uh, she was afraid to go she, on. It wasn't like all about Eve. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, get me out of here. <laughs> so, Parenthetically, your director, Reginald Denham, was married to the woman who wrote the original story, All About Eve, Mary Orr. Yes. And Reginald Denham is the real life counterpart of the Gary Merrill character in All About Eve. Wow. <laughs> Didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Did, was it difficult to do the show in times of week with these huge emotions? For me? Yes, for you. No, I would. I would say you know it would have been harder for the women, the adults, you know. But no, I'm telling you, it was a. It was so fun. <laughs> because you could be absolutely awful, you know, and just sarcastic. And, well, I come from I come from New York originally, Brooklyn, and and our, our whole family has that ability. <laughs> it's genetic. We, we have that sarcastic ability. Uh, that's all I'll say. Um, yeah, I once asked so I tapped you. into it. <laughs> yeah. I once asked Patty, because we, we've done this a lot, but yeah. we're pretending it's the first yeah, time. Yeah, we're pretending. Pretend. But I asked you, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I asked you how you felt about the character. Yeah, and I... And you said... That I loved her, you know? And uh, later on, I was asked to uh, to do it again. Um, well, there's a, there's a friend of mine. Did I mention Muscatine, Iowa, and Max Allen Collins? He's actually um, Al Collins. He's, he's always said his dad was Max, but on the novels that he writes, he's Max Allen Collins. Um, and he lives in Muscatine, Iowa. He's written a lot of stuff. They did a movie um, on one of his books. Um, he came up with an idea to um, grow Rhoda up as though she, she lived in Iowa. And, um, and it was actually a really healthy thing to do for me. Um, it was, it, the town raised the money um, to make this indie movie. And there are two of them. There's uh, Mommy and Mommy Day. Um, and there was something really helpful in doing that for, for myself because uh, 
I connected so strongly with the character that it was nice to, to you know, grow her up, basically. Um, uh, and I felt that that, I, that it was accomplished in my mind, you yeah. know? Yeah, but, but did you have to love the character in order to play her, do you think? Um, but you did love, you loved Rhoda. Well, yeah, I look, I look back on it fondly, and I, you know, there are things I could learn from her, you know? I was asking Patty, I said, uh, I said, I, you're, you can tell Patty has very little in common with Rhoda Penmore. And I, <laughs> I asked you about becoming Rhoda, and you said, well, not yet. <laughs> but it, it still hasn't happened. Yeah, well, you know, she, her confidence is awe-inspiring. And, uh, you know, her sense of self and centeredness and and all of that. When you did the film. Need, that we all need. Yeah, she has she, those qualities. She had, yeah. Yes, she, she has she those did. qualities. When you did the film, did you, was there a lot of change? Was Melvin, Mervyn Leroy different from Reginald Denham? Oh, did he so help you in a different way? You know, he, he really liked what we did. So he tried to make it as as uh, easy as possible to run our scenes the way we had, and then if he had adjustments for film, he would do that. You know, um, maybe a little less here, a little more over here. You know, um, but in general, he was very respectful of the production. He loved the production. Yeah, and he became the producer as well as the director of yeah. this because he loved the material. The other night, I met his granddaughter and great-granddaughter, wow. who came to see uh, Mornings at Seven, mm -hmm. which some of the, we're, I we're think some get, of the people in the picture. We are. We are. We are. <laughs> we're going to get to you, we're going to you the last. You're the only people allowed to ask a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you did the film, did it feel fresh, or did it feel like you were repeating something? Oh, it felt fresh, I have to say, because every time you did it, Anyway, it felt fresh, mm -hmm. especially in the theater. But um, you never got tired of doing it. No, no, I didn't. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I was a pretty happy kid, I have to say. Did, I like did you play for audience reaction? Did you, if you got it, if it oh, were, I love if you got it, <laughs> grimace, did you play at the oh, grimace yeah. a little bit? I remember that clearly. Like a lot of those horrible faces I made, <laughs> I, I enhance them because I did a little one once, you know, and then I heard them go, <gasps> and then I thought, oh, this is fun, you know, <laughs> I do it a little bigger. Um. <laughs> but it, but, but the, the film, I was telling the folks beforehand, that this isn't just a film, it's not a transcription of a, of a play, it's a reimagined film. Yeah, and, and it's very different. It's them. very different. And they, you know, they have exteriors, exteriors we were yeah. all in the, in the main living room. You know, everything occurred there. Um, and I never saw the picnic. You know, it's fun to see the picnic scene. Shelley Fabre was in the picnic scene. And uh, Sissy on... on uh, Family Affair? Yes, is in, is in it. Kathy Garver's... Kathy Garver. Kathy Garver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who's but written a lot of books. She lately. has. Yeah. But, it, but it, it, it opens it up and the camera changes or low angles and close-ups. Yeah. So the rhythm is very different from the rhythm of the play. It's that's, not just the camera there, and you're just saying lines. It's not that at all. My favorite um, visual was when uh, I got to, it felt like I was, um, I don't know, it felt like a dance or something. But I loved the, after the shoes, the shoe scene, and then I go into the, the in the film anywhere, and I go into the kitchen, and I open the incinerator door, and throw the shoes in one at a time, and then did that, and I knew the camera rose up, and that was one of my favorite things to do. I don't know why. But it's, it a great, it's a great shot. Very cool. It's a great yeah, shot. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Leroy, a helpful in interpretation, or were your interpretations set by the time you got to the film? They were, they were, I they mean, were I, set. Not to take away any credit from Mervyn Leroy, of course, but um, I think he was really pleased most of the time with what we did. And as I said, little, you know, 
um, because he was the a film director. You know, he knew what would play better, you know, and what wouldn't. So, and so he did sometimes you know, bring it down. I a think little. we were all pretty big, you know, but that was we were all we were all doing a style of yes. the of the time. And so everything was a heightened uh, theatricality sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people would say that was it was pretty hammy, you know. I I I I've <laughs> had I, many arguments on that subject. You, I don't but I like think that. It is. You know, it's heightened. Like, yeah, and we're all at least it's not just one of us doing it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but we're all kind of doing it, so it's I enjoy it. Now, for for years, I know. If I had invited you to an evening like this, you might have said no. I mean, weren't there times when you really didn't want to talk about the bad scene? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, there were periods of time where I was, you know, because it was, especially in transition into teenage years and whatever. Um, and back in that day, that the um, it was considered if you had a job when you were a kid and now you were an awkward teenager. You know, you look like a has been. Mm. Yeah, that's like a, not a thing you want to be. So, um, so a lot of times it was played down, um, and you, I tried to focus on only now. You know, <laughs> and um, but then as time went on, the strangest thing was happening with social media and all that stuff, and people started to honor people's pasts. Because you know you just Google somebody and you say, oh my God, look what they did, or look. At, um, and with that, because it began to get received well outside of me, um, they gave me permission to you know, honor it again. And so you're 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 happy honoring. You realize yeah, I feel, it's, a, I feel, it's a landmark. Film. Yeah, it's my life, you know. Yeah. And so you think, you know, that was pretty amazing to to start out like that and have that happen and uh you once said to me patty you that you, you didn't want your to, co career to be thought of as you did the bad seed and nothing else yeah of course everybody has that you know but there's always something you do in a career where they where they associate that with you no matter what you do you know what i mean <laughs> so i think uh, but particularly because I was a child, and I wanted to have something current. So I have to say, I, I'm just going to throw this in because it was so appreciated um, that when I dared to <laughs> do this latest thing with the, the morning set, etc., um, that I nobody. Nobody said I didn't belong in New York. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, it was so nice. And they have no idea how important that was because, you know, I haven't been in New York in a hundred years. The way, you know what I mean? By so, the way, the, the years between the bad scene yeah. and mornings at seven, what? 66 years, oh, is yeah. a Guinness Book of World Records that you set between New York appearances. 66 years. Is that, is that a good thing? I'm going to expand that. Okay. Patty has been working steadily for over 70 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She has never given up. No. You, you don't give up. No. Sometimes the films weren't, weren't great. Sometimes you were good things. Sometimes A list, sometimes B list. You never stopped working. You were always out there trying. No. <laughs> I guess that's true. And so, I mean, I, so you love some, your profession. Some years had more energy than others. <laughs> but, more, but you never you know, really dropped out. You never gave up. No, I never, I, I mean, there was a period, you know what, there was a period where I did nothing. And it was from, I think I was from like um, 18 to 21. Three year period, nothing. Um, and and I was in New York, and and uh, but that was it. Other than that, there was never a big stretch. I always did something, and I did a lot of theater, but not in New York, you know. Um, I saw you in Cat on Hot Tin Roof in California. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. Terrific. Uh, sister woman. Yes. Yes. May. 
Jose Quintero. Yes, oh, it was a terrific production. That was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. terrific production. Yeah, it was fun. Terrific. And <laughs> we must, I must tell you, two credits. Do you know that Patty is the original um, Helen Keller in The Miracle Worker? Oh, yeah. The original on Day of the Night, opposite <laughs> Teresa Wright. You yes. originated the role. Teresa Wright, and, I, and then the weird thing is Teresa Wright would play Cora yeah. in Morning mm. and Seven. Yes, in the 1980 yes. revival. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. something for all film buffs here. Yeah. Patty was cast by Orson Welles to appear in his oh, unfinished yeah. Don Quixote. Yeah. And you told me that when you were working with Welles, your mother said to you, you know, Patty, you're working with somebody who's very important. Yes, yes, she did. And But he was really... And the people shook, and I think he, he inspired fear in a lot of people around him. But he was, because um, he was so queerly Orson Welles, you know, um, talented and, you know, trying to make movies when nobody would let him, you know, or support him anymore. Um, that's a long story. Yeah. Um, but it was in Mexico, and we shot at a little motel and uh, my mother was there obviously and uh and he was so nice to work with he'd come down after rewriting each night before just changing things a little bit you know and when you're a kid you you don't get nervous so it was remember it you know um but he was a he had a twinkle in his eye i always said that when he would talk to me because you could see the the sweetness in it, and uh, but I'm telling you, people feared, feared him, feared him, feared him. yeah. But I did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he was nice. He but was the so film, good. have you seen? The, no, no. It's they unfinished. cut it out. No, they cut. The only thing left in the in the finished uh, Don Quixote is. Um, my sitting in a movie theater watching the film and something else really really small but we had all the stuff about his telling me the story before each segment it was gone so whoever took over cut it up where he probably wouldn't have been pleased that happened to so many of his films mm. but it, it's a wonderful memory to have to I be know. working with a master like that terrific huh yeah, it's wonderful. And you worked with two important films recently. Do you know uh, Patty was Pat Nixon and Frost Nixon? Mm. Oh, yeah. And you look a little like Pat Nixon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had the, her hair. Yeah. I yeah. studied her, you know. And you were in The Master with, directed mm. by the wonderful Paul Tom Sanderson. Yeah. That was thrilling. Yes. And, uh, yes. <laughs> so you, you come to New York. Yeah. Uh, for Mornings of Death, yes. which is one of the greatest of all American plays. And it's a wonderful ensemble. You're, you're oh, all so terrific. You're oh, terrific yeah. in it. There isn't a trace of Rhoda Penmark in her performance. <laughs> <laughs> Not anything. It's a completely no. different character. Mm -hmm. I saw it four times, as you know. I know. Um, I did. I saw it four it's times. Almost, almost got my nephew's record. Your kids were seven. Yeah, seven. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but four times. Yeah. And it was, it was superb. Yeah. Did you... Was it nervous making to come back to New York and, on, and be on stage? Well, you know, you know, by the time I, it had a lot to do with being COVID, being locked down, life not being what it was, not seeing the grandkids, not seeing anybody, uh, death lurking at the door, and um, realizing that, and when the, came, the opportunity came up, I normally probably, if it had been another time, I probably wouldn't have said, yeah, put, throw my name in, you know, because it meant leaving, uh, for one thing. Um, you know, we all get stuck in our own patterns, I guess, you know. And, uh, and so with that, that really made me want to do something scary. <laughs> or at least with a lot of life in it, you know, and I thought, what, when is that going to happen again? You know, I think of how old I am, and there aren't a lot of parts for old people, you know, so, and there were four of them, you know, so, um, four older women. And so that was really, and then 
my friend Dan, you know, threw my name in with Julian Schlossberg, yes. and and uh, and he and Dan said, "Watch, watch what you wish for." And I said, "Okay." And uh, and then it happened. You know, it happened that they said they were interested, and that was that. So we were so we were all sorry not to bemoan this, but that we didn't play the whole run. It would have been nice. Um, but but I think we all liked it very much, what we had, and it enjoyed it. It was a beautiful yeah. collection. Yeah. And uh, oh, cast yeah. and crew stand up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who all is. You look like if they're standing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a question? Patty said, wonder if you had a question. Well, if you do, if you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and we will yes, have covered everything. Somebody from the cast, not for the audience. No questions from the audience. Uh, okay. How many takes did you do in the film? You mean, uh, in general? Yes. Um, you know, we had a short, I remember it was a short shooting schedule. Maybe six weeks, really? so not a lot, because <laughs> there was a lot to do, you know. So I, I would say it would depend, but I, I don't really remember a lot of takes, honestly, because we all knew what we were doing, and uh, if there was a problem, it would have been technical more than anything, um, and they knew what they were doing. So um, I, I don't remember it being tiresome like that, you know. So. <laughs> I, I should say that uh, Patty was the first child nominated for an Academy Award. Before that, it was all just an honorary award. Oh. But you were the first competitive. Oh, in an adult category. Oh, yes. Oh, no. But then Tatum O'Neill. <laughs> Jackie Cooper. Was he Jackie in an adult category? Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. Ah. And, but this was one of the first, right? Yes, one of the first. First female. First female. Okay. But, but I, I have to say for myself, it's the greatest performance by a child I have ever seen. And, and, and Patty is, as you can see, is not very hard to talk to. You all probably want to say hello to her. But would you allow me to go in to the lobby and to be at a table and you can come up and mm. say hello and if you have questions, I'm sure she'll be happy yeah. to answer them. Absolutely. But we yeah. planned a little something. We're going to end with Patty McCormick delivering oh, one, of, no. <laughs> one of Rhoda's greatest <laughs> lines. How I, you know, it's hard to wire up right now but <laughs> um well you should have fed me the cue you know that would have been <laughs> you mean just you want me to just say give me those shoes <laughs> that is Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, if you get a chance, so, 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 so,